96.7 KCAL Rocks, you know what we do on a Thursday. We talk some sports. Big game tonight. Let's talk with our guy, Pep. What's going on, Pep? All right, so lots of good news, lots of bad news. If you're an LA, L.A. Clippers fan and we're going into game three against the Phoenix Suns tonight in Los Angeles, the good news is the Clippers have been down 2-0 in each of their previous playoff series this season. So even though they're down two games to none against the Phoenix Suns, They've come back before. We've been here before. We've seen this story before. They, they, they can battle back. That's not to, you know, not to worry about too much. The bad news is Kawhi Leonard has already been ruled out of Game 3 tonight. And guys, it does not look good on a possible return this postseason for the pride of King High School in Riverside, Kawhi Leonard. It does not look good in terms of that for sure. But I do have to give the Clippers credit for playing pretty darn well and having a great play and inbounds pass done by Crowder to the big fella for the Valley Oop. The Valley Oop is like the coolest nickname for a play in a long time and just one of the coolest plays. That's like, it's one thing to be down 0-2, but to lose to the Valley Oop in the last couple seconds of a game like that, that is deflating. I mean, it'll be... It'll be, if the Clippers can rebound from that with a win, that's insanely huge because it just seems like all the wind is out of their sails right now after that. Pep Crowder threw a nice Tom Brady back shoulder pass <laughs> for the Valley Oop. It was beautiful. Oh, it was it was spot on. Like he couldn't have thrown that pass from the baseline any better. It, it, it almost hit the backboard, but it didn't. Um, it put, he put it right over the cylinder, right over the rim. In fact, it might have went in. Like, I know Aiton threw it down for the dunk, but I think it had a chance of maybe even going in, but Aiton was able to, no goaltending on the inbound pass, but he was able to just tap it down. And you guys are right, that is so deflating. If, if the Clippers could have snuck away and split one game, um, you know, a win and a loss on the road against the Suns to bring it back to Los Angeles, this would feel like a completely different series. But because of that right. dramatic win for Phoenix at the buzzer, they're up 2-0, Kawhi is still out, and it just does not look good. It just feels like all the momentum is on Phoenix's side. Oh, yeah, and by the way, Chris Paul is probable. So he's probably going to play for Phoenix tonight. So it will be all hands on deck for the Suns. Come on, Pandemic P. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> they, hey, he actually had a pretty good game um, in game two in which they lost. But still, man, it, it just so deflating. This Phoenix team is just a very good team across the board. He did admit it, but I mean, he did miss two huge free throws, which opened the door for the Valley. Oh, yeah, yeah it, it's one of those things, man. It's like he hit some big baskets. I'll give that to him. He hit some big baskets, but he also missed some crucial free throws that could have sealed the win for the mm. Clippers. So, I mean, it just it is what it is. It's basketball. I hate looking at one play or one or one specific sequence at the end of a game to say that was the difference, but. But really, that was the mm. difference. I mean, they, they could have got that win on the road in the desert. Yep. So game three is tonight. If you're a Clippers fan, uh, hold your breath. Uh, you know, tonight's going to be a big one. If they lose tonight, it, it's not going to uh -oh. look good. But again, we've seen this before. You lose the first two games, you battle back, you win the series. So it's not impossible, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be an uphill battle. Definitely. And then on the other guys, uh, on the other side, guys, in the Eastern Conference, the Atlanta Hawks, which besides Trey Young, who's on the Atlanta Hawks, who knows? But the Atlanta Hawks beat the Milwaukee Bucks last night in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. So just going by who's leading the Conference Finals right now, get ready for a Suns versus Hawks NBA Finals. Like How, how uh, appealing does that final sound? <laughs> It just seems so wacky and weird, but I mean, they better do something about Trey Young when he's doing the shimmy before he shoots it. He is heating up like crazy. He's a problem. I mean, I kind of said it you know, back a couple of days ago where it's like, we've lost the superstars in the NBA playoffs, but the four teams that are left are all pretty fun to watch, low key. Yeah. And now they're getting a chance to kind of shine, and I think... You're not going to get make, like big names in the NBA Finals, but I think we're going to get some good series at least. I get a lot of friends who are always like, ah, I want the big markets or whatever. I kind of like the different teams, to tell you the truth. I think it's cool. You know, like the Tampa Bay Rays going to the World Series to play the Dodgers. I loved it. Tampa Bay, you know, didn't have big names, didn't have a big payroll, but they got to the World Series. They went up against the mighty Dodgers. They lost, but they got there. I'd love to see a team like the Atlanta Hawks and or the Phoenix Suns get to the NBA Finals. You're right. It's it's not very appealing, I guess, for a nationwide audience. 
But as a basketball fan, I bet you that'd be a great series. And, you know, still we have a long ways to go to get to the finals. But right now that's, you know, Atlanta versus Phoenix could be that possible matchup based on, you know, how the series have started in the conference finals. It would be insane if Atlanta could hold off Milwaukee. Milwaukee is pretty loaded. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, we've been talking the last several years about Milwaukee. Like, oh, this is the Bucks' year. They're going to get to the finals. They'll probably see the Lakers in the finals. It's going to be Bucks in the finals. And uh, they just have not gotten over the hump yet. But mm-hmm. who knows? Again, like the Clippers coming back against Phoenix, Milwaukee could turn things around on Atlanta, win four in a row, and this whole conversation doesn't mean anything, um, you know, come come next week. So, what they play the game. Somebody could just guard Trey Young. They might be okay. He's shooting from the logo. <laughs> right, man. Yeah, if you haven't seen him play, he's like Steph Curry, basically, right? Little guy could shoot yeah. lights out, big-time score. I think he had 48 last night against the Bucks. so he's a lot of fun to watch. But again, here on the West Coast, here in Southern California, in the IE, you know, we're not exactly watching the Atlanta Hawks on a nightly basis, so not a lot of people know about this guy. No. Guys, um, here we are in the NBA Conference Finals, but we also have the NBA Draft Lottery, and that means that's the order of, of the teams who are going to pick in the NBA Draft. The Pistons will go number one, the Rockets two, Cavaliers three, and I only bring that up because our guy Evan Mobley, Evan Mobley from USC, he's an Inland Empire guy, he went to Rancho Christian down there in Temecula, so he's a Riverside County guy, he could go number one. Could go two, could go three. So I bring up the the Pistons, the Rockets, and the Cavaliers because those will probably be, one of those teams will probably be his NBA team. And kind of much like we're seeing with Zion, he'll be there for a couple years, not do much, and then he'll probably leave, sign a big deal with a more exciting team. (laughs) (laughs) Or I mean, maybe Houston. I mean, they're an organization. Yeah, I mean, if Detroit and Cleveland do not look too appealing. And Houston was good not too long ago. Obviously, they had some big stars on that team at the time. But, yeah, maybe Houston could be uh, a team that could be ready to win soon. So, But, anyways, that's why they put the bad teams on top, right? So you can get the great players like Evan Mobley and try to get them competitive again, right? <laughs> so. Hey, it's cool. We get to see where he goes. They get him for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Guys, let's switch to Major League Baseball. And, yes, the Padres – did sweep the Dodgers. They won the third game in a row against the Dodgers last night. So the San Diego sweeps LA. But the big news is what's going on with the umpires and Major League Baseball constantly checking pitchers for foreign substances. And at this point, guys, if you've watched any of the games or the highlights, it's simply comical. They're checking pitchers all the time and the pitchers cannot stand it. They've had enough of this. Well, Max Scherzer was taking his belt off and started pulling his pants down. Yeah. He was so furious about it. And Joe Girardi and him, the manager, by the way, who was coming, he was about to fight Max Scherzer. They were going to knuckle up. I mean, I do think baseball is to the point right now where they're trying to make it known they're doing this because they didn't wait until the offseason to do it. They started making this change midseason. So they have to really show that they're into it right now. I think eventually these pitcher checks are probably going to go to like an in-between innings, off-camera sort of thing. But I think for right now, when you're rolling it out and you want to make sure the fans and the players know you're rolling it out, you kind of got to make this big spectacle of it. Uh, yeah, it's like they went 0-60. to 60, You know what I mean? Like they just right. like, hey, here's our rule. Boom, we're going to go right off the edge and just do it big time. So like all these pitchers are getting checked, and you're right. They're, they're dropping their pants. They're throwing their glove down. They're taking off their hat. They're having the umpires. The umpires are ru- taking their hands and going through their hair to see if they have hair gel or some substance in their hair that they're touching and then touching the baseball. Like it's it's insane. It's funny. Um, and I don't know how long this will last because it, it, it is kind of out of control right now. It won't because it's making the game even longer, yes. which is going against what they're trying to do. I bet you this goes away and we don't hear about it. Am I the only one that feels no sorrow at all for these pictures? <laughs> oh, using all this stuff? Yeah. yeah. You're whining because you're being caught cheating. Yeah. yeah. I, I like it just because it's comical, but yeah, it slows the game way down on a game that's already slow. So I think that's what people are going to have exactly. an issue with. So Not good. Yeah. But this is not the thing to stop doing to speed the game up. Let's yeah. speed the game up with the stuff that the game sucks for. Not <laughs> and finally, guys, hey, uh, hey, guys, real quick, I just want to touch on this. NFL star Kenny Clark, the pride of San Bernardino, the pride of Carter High School. He's back this weekend. He's holding his youth camp this Sunday. 
And it's so cool because if you go back to last summer, obviously we didn't have any camps. The pandemic hit. Everything was shut down. But he brought his camp back by popular demand. And he always has some other NFL guys out there with him. The kids love it. So big shout out to our guy, Kenny Clark, who always comes back to the IE and gives back. Ah, very cool, man. We know you got to talk to him a little bit. I'm curious, did he say anything about whether Aaron Rodgers is going to be back there in Green Bay? Did he break any news to our guy, <laughs> Pep? I mean, the guy who's got his finger on the pulse. Yeah, yeah, here's the breaking news. He says no worries about Aaron Rodgers. He'll play quarterback if Green Bay oh, needs him to play quarterback. So Kenny will play defensive line, and then uh, both sides of the football, he'll play QB for the Packers. Good luck trying to sack him. I love <laughs> exactly, <it>. right? <laughs> Pat, tell them how to get your stuff. It's Inland Sports. If you're down with Kenny Clark, check it out. Inland Sports, uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We've got the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Check it out. Kenny Clark interviews and a whole lot more. Thanks, Pat.